What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Dominic Arena here and we are here talking today about the Fender Pro Junior. Um, this is an amp from Fender that's been around man, for 30 years or so. They're actually on the fourth generation of uh, the series of the Pro Juniors and uh, what I have here, this is an older one. This is well, generation one. This is a made in the USA Pro Junior um, I believe it's like a 93, 94, so it, it's quite old, but uh, I've had it in my arsenal for a while, and um, I'm just finding myself playing it a lot more lately, and um, I was like, ah, you know what, let's make a video real quick, kind of talk about what's new about the new ones, and uh, why I love this amp so much. So, it's a, um, this one's not stock anymore, my Tolex was all ripping, uh, being, you know, 27 years old. The, um, I ended up painting the cab white. I did replace the speaker cloth. Um, it's got brand new tubes in it, and I did swap out the speaker. So the speaker in it now is a Jensen, uh, it's a 10 inch Jensen uh, Jet Series. Um, I believe it's the Tornado. Um, I could be wrong about that. Um, but the original speaker was a Fender labeled, you know, uh, I, I believe Eminence makes it for them. And they're a little bright. They're a little bit more of that crystal highs this is a little bit more balanced speaker. Um, it is ceramic. It's not an Alnico or anything like that, but it, I think it really did help this amp out a lot. Now, I'm not going to sit here and bullshit too much. We'll talk about it after I play some uh, some tones on it. Basically, I got the amp set at six on the volume. It's a two knob amp. It's, it's volume and tone. That's all. Right, that's it. The um, volume is set at six. The tone is set at eight. I am playing a um, 1950s uh, classic vibe Squire Strat with um, El Nico 3s in it. I'll be playing on the neck pickup. Um, no pedals, no nothing. I do have an analog um, delay that I'll add later just to show you how the amp takes um, pedals through the front end. So uh, let's just let the guitar do the talking first and then uh, we'll discuss. So there we go. We'll do a little. Oh, real quick too, I am recording this. I don't have a professional setup, so I am basically recording this into a uh, blue snowball mic. The mic is set about three and a half feet from the amplifier to kind of pick up the room. Um, I don't have a DAW or anything to record direct off the speaker, um, otherwise I'll just, I'll just peek out and it'll sound like shit. So you are getting more of a room vibe, and I know YouTube kind of compresses videos and stuff and all that, but uh, it's got to be an idea, man. Um, it's very woody toned. 
um, very boxy, and if I had to put a flaw on this particular amplifier, um, it would be the cabinet. The um, if you know anything about reissue Fender amps, you know like the uh, '68 uh, Vibro Champ, the '68 Custom Deluxe, '65 Princeton, they all use uh, seven ply birch cabinets, and they don't on this. This is not MDF. Don't get me wrong. All right, I can't stand MDF cabinets. Um, but it is particle board on three of the four sides. So particle board, particle, particle. The bottom of the cabinet is, is birch ply. Now I really wished on this particular model because this model is kind of fitted around the 10. Okay, the 10 inch speaker. I wish they would have went with a narrow panel. Kept it about this height, but brought it out about three more inches and set the um, 10 inch speaker a little offset. Um, just to give it a little bit bigger sound and then also make the cabinet out of birch ply. Now I know why they did this. It, they they got to keep costs down. This is a $500 amp. It's not a $1,000 tube amp like you know a lot, a lot of other fenders. But it does make it sound very front projection. There's no cabinet resonance um, out of this particle board. It's very like the sounds here and that's it. You don't get that, that beautiful woody uh, cabinet sound out of this particular box. That's my only problem with it. Now, if you're playing a show with it, 15 watts all tube, it's two 12AX7s in the front, two uh, EL84s in the back, in the power section, is more than enough fucking volume. More than enough volume to hang with a drummer. But um, nine out of 10 times, you're probably gonna have this mic'd up and let the house kind of do the work. And you're not gonna hear that cabinet resonance anyways it's just going to be the speaker amplified through the house and it sounds huge when you mic these up now what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to flick on a little bit of analog delay and i just have it set to like a slap back setting the uh the uh add a little bit It's got a little bit of analog delay on it just to show you how it takes front uh, pedals in the front end. shaping you got uh, you got no uh, no effects unless you run a pedal in front of it and I will wet this up a little bit just so you can really hear the analog and I'm gonna I'm gonna play on the neck and the middle position with my uh, volume about uh, put my volume about uh, seven on the guitar that's picking up 
um, on the on the microphone there, but it's just a real quick repeat. Just kind of makes it sound a little bit fuller, and not so boxy. Um, but that's pretty much it. I love the amp. I love it, love it, love it. Like I said, the only thing um, I'm not a huge fan of is this cabinet. That's it's not a deal breaker, but you know I I get it. But uh, I do want to talk something a little bit about the new one. So this, like I said, this is a USA made one from uh, 9394. And um, the new ones, the Series 4s are, um, they've had some modification stuff. So they did, um, they did modify the volume circuit. So like this one here, it's kind of like, it's like clean, 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 and boom, then you're dirty, right? Where the new ones, the Series 4s, the Mark 4s, um, it's more of a linear breakup, which I do like. So it adds a little bit of breakup as you're going in. It's just not like on off like the originals are. They also modified the tone circuit and tightened the bass up on the tone circuit, which is good if you crank this amp. Now it is pretty loud in here playing at, uh, at six. But one thing though is if you actually dime this amp, um, it adds a little bass to it. And you get natural compression and everything from the tubes, which kind of helps, but it does feel like there's a little bit too much low end, especially when you're playing on the E strings. Um, the new ones tighten up that bass the farther you go up on the, on, the, uh, on the tone and the volume, which I thought it sounded a little bit more musically to me. So I, got, I was able to play the new ones in the stores. I have not had a chance to play one at home in a more confined area where I can really listen to the details. Um, they are offering the Pro Junior 4 with an Elmico speaker. It's a Jensen P10, and I really do like that speaker. It's about a $100 speaker, and I could have thrown that in here. I didn't want to spend that much money um, on a speaker just yet. So that's nice on the Series 4. They are made in Mexico, and I know a lot of people are looking for the original USA Mates, um, made in uh, Corona, uh, California. But um, the Mexican ones are fine. They're great. It's all the same shit. The only thing that I noticed, um, and this is, I only know this because I've talked to a handful of people that have um, Pro Juniors that are made in Mexico. And the original ones, these USA mud ones, they actually used uh, lead solder. So the solder had a, a content of lead in it, which actually makes a better connection. So the new ones um, have lead-free solder. And the only downfall to that, and this is not a big problem, okay, but there has been people that have experienced this. These things vibrate, amplifiers vibrate, and it physically moves air. So over time, from playing the uh, amp, especially the amp really pushed, the, um, the vacuum tubes vibrate. And what is happening is it's causing the solder points of the, uh, the tube socket to, to break. And next thing you know, you don't, have, um, you don't have power anymore. You'll notice that your tubes look dead. Um, it's because it's not making the connection to the socket, that the socket kind of breaks free from the board. Um, the, lead so the lead solder was a better quality, but they stopped using it because, oh shit, it's, it's lead. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we got to get lead out of our product, especially in California. California's got so many fucking cancer warning shit on everything you buy. The, um, that's why they moved to lead-free solder. But in reality, the leaded solder does work better on electrical components for, you know, a, a better a solder joint, you know, a solder weld. So, but other than that, man, they're great amps. The Made in Mexico's, I have no, no issues with them whatsoever. They're great. They're great. And if it, if it helps keep costs down when purchasing these things, because they are made in another country, I'm fucking fine with it as long as the build quality is there. So, that's kind of it. Um, just want to talk about the amp, play a little bit for you guys, let you listen to it. And uh, if you guys have any um, questions about the amp for me, leave them in the comment section. I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, uh, the subscribe button. It does help me out a lot, keeps me motivated to make more videos. Um, if I do end up buying the uh, Pro Junior 4, I'll, uh, I'll do an AB comparison um, with them and see how it stacks up against the USA and uh, 
take it from there. So until then, I'll catch you guys very soon, man. Peace and hair grease. Bye.